Hey, we're here with uh, some fine folks from iZombie. Uh, first of all, congratulations on some of the awards you've been getting as of late. Uh, your show's been really well received. Uh, what's it been like for you to, to sort of come out of the first season and have such uh, such love for the show? Oh, it's been great, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, we got we uh, the MTV Phantom Award yesterday, yeah. and um, it, it was incredible. I mean, the response, uh, all the love from the fans has been great. Yeah, it's ex last year it was kind of a hard sell. We were an unknown entity, uh, and we were selling the idea of a of a you know a medical student turn zombie <laughs> who has to eat brains and start solving crimes. Uh, and that was that was you know we just we're so excited for people yeah. to finally see it, see it yeah. rather than nutshell it and synopsize it. Um, and and now everybody has seen it and it's out in the ether and people are dressed up in cosplay as Liv. And we don't, and Robbie, we don't have to explain a, the show this year too. Yeah, Let's just go. everybody right, already knows know. what it is. This is know. great. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because uh, The Walking Dead, of course, now now has two shows, and it's this really dark, sort of grim thing. And uh, like last year, you were saying, the idea of a zombie show that can also have uh, crime-solving elements and be funny and, also and be witty. Exists, and like like zombies exist in pop culture. In that's our shows. right. That's yeah. right. We can reference. Yeah. You can watch the a zombie Dead. movie in iZombie. Yes. Right. Exactly. You could have an iHeart Norman Reedus T-shirt on. <laughs> that's right. It could be mine. It could be my T-shirt yeah. that I own, and she could wear it on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I, I have a question, uh, Malcolm. Uh, so far, a lot of people on the show after the first season have sort of become aware of the zombie world, but yeah. not your character. No. Is that something you like, just being detached from that, or would you like to somehow sort of get in the know? No, I love it. I love not knowing. You know, I always say Clive represents, like, everybody in the real world. Like Diane said, you know, The Walking Dead exists in our world. I say Clive goes home, he wa he watches The Walking Dead, and zombies to him are ugh, those kind of zombies, not talking zombies who think and help him solve crimes. So I don't think he'll ever, ever uh, guess that um, she's a, a zombie. <laughs> now, uh, David, your, your character uh, really hasn't interacted that much with uh, the law enforcement side of things. Sorry, honey. But again, you bring such a really fun dynamic to such sort of a, a really sort of sinister character, but one that's also born out of necessity. You know, he's an entrepreneur, but he's also uh, a realist as a sense. Is that your take on him? Uh, yeah, sure. Everything you said. Um, uh, yeah, he is. There's that plea with, with Liv at the end of, uh, of end of the season that he's the one that keeps the zombies satiated and keeps them at bay and keeps them otherwise, uh, you know, we're this far away from a zombie apocalypse if I don't keep feeding them. Um, so, yeah, and that entrepreneurial spirit. It's good to see a zombie making his way in the world. <laughs> yeah, nice young upstart zombie yeah. finding a way to carve out his piece of the pie. Right. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest uh, sort of fan-pleasing moments right at the end of the season was that big shootout set to the Commissar. Oh, yeah. Yes. Great. Um, that's based because that's what Rob Thomas has us call him, so that's why we hey, do that. I was wondering about the, <laughs> yeah, I've never about the song him choice. I've anything else. It's really, I think that's the first time I've said Rob Thomas. It's always. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what was behind sort of that, the, the, it was a big character moment for Major, but also there was a cheekiness involved because of the song. Uh, is that sort of like, this is a really big action moment, but the show's never going to go full dark. It's always going to have that sort of little, little kind wink. Of. It's also very much our our tone, you know. With Veronica Mars, we did a lot of that. There was the, in the Veronica Mars movie, we had a big, uh, a funny "You'll Never Find" by Lou Rawls playing over a big, like dramatic, tense scene. So that's something that we, that Rob tends to really enjoy. So it just, I mean, it's still dark. It's just dark. With a little fun. Yeah. I hate some fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what can you guys tease us so far uh, about season two coming up? Is there anything you can tell us about the direction that the, these characters are taking? The second season is going to smart. The. Uh, You're going to sing? I'm going to sing. Oh, yeah, I have sing. often walked <laughs> down the street before, but the pavement sing always said <laughs> beneath yeah. my feet before. There you go. Done. Done. I was saying last year at Comic Con, Andrew sang in the hallway, and like girls were walking by, and their underwear was just falling off their bar body yeah. and like flying at him. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, we have to get it on the show. I think they all just had tiny asses. It wasn't hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have to find out something to do with, now that you're not a zombie anymore on the yeah, show. Yeah, Blaine's gonna be uh, humanized quite literally, um, and uh, it's gonna be fun playing with that. And uh, we're gonna learn about some daddy issues that he has. Yes. Great. You have to figure that's what made him. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Uh, everybody watch iZombie, catch up on season one before season two starts, and stay here at IGN for more Comic-Con news. <laughs>